Welcome to Ministry of Offence, the show that gets into bed with the news, only to defecate under its duvet. I'm your host, Stephen Allen, and I'm going to start with a quick recap of the news you might have missed this week. The Mail on Sunday printed claims that Angela Rayner uncrosses and crosses her legs to distract Boris Johnson in the Commons. Boris isn't going to be put off by that. The best way to throw him off his stride is to wave a paternity test. <laughs> If Boris could be aroused at work just by women's legs, then it stands to reason he would have made endless policy decisions that illustrated blood being diverted from the brain, like granting PPE contracts to his mates or ignoring his own rules on lockdown. All right, forget that. <laughs> I happen to know what does it for Boris is silk stockings, so the only time he has to pull a cushion over his lap is when Black Rod opens Parliament. <laughs> There should be no staring at female MPs' legs in Parliament. Just do what other honourable members would do, and ogle porn on your smartphone. <laughs> of course, power is an aphrodisiac, which is why Boris has to disguise a permanent semi, and Keir Starmer has to wear a special corset to stop his penis burrowing back into his pelvis. <laughs> Rishi Sunak's favourite biscuits are Maryland cookies. You may wonder why he didn't choose a much bigger biscuit, but if you've been to an all-boys boarding school, there's a pretty revolting reason why you'd prefer one with a smaller surface area. If you don't get that joke, count yourself lucky. Boxer Tyson Fury managed an impressive victory against Dillian White. I'm not ashamed to say he inspired me. I saw him bobbing about and thought, if he can have a quivering muffin top, so can I. <laughs> I remember when I first saw him live, I was stunned. As I swear to God, I thought I was going to see the Gypsy Kings. <laughs> Felt stupid in that Matador outfit. 63-year-old Madonna split from her 28-year-old boyfriend, and her biological clock is ticking. Um, <laughs> they weren't going to have children. I mean, the other clock. <laughs> Many thought they were such a good match that they would make things official, not get married, but her adopt him. <laughs> DJ Tim Westwood has left his radio job after allegations of sexual harassment from numerous women. Tim has strenuously denied all allegations, stressing he has nothing but respect for both you bitches and you hoes. <laughs> As well as his radio show, Tim has been cancelled from several live performances, including one at Butlins in Bognor Regis, fueling speculation that he may well have started the rumours himself. <laughs> it's not the first time Tim Westwood has behaved offensively. I seem to remember there was that time he was caught doing black voice. When was it? Um, 1988 to 2022. <laughs> and that's your weekly roundup of the news. Time to get on with the show. <laughs> Of course, no panel show is complete without panellists, so first, let's meet the team. Our team captain for the right is a comedian who, at the age of 46, is believed to be Scotland's oldest man. It's Leo Curse. I'm 45. And his teammate is a man who was reared in San Francisco, and if rumours are true, many, many times. It's Scott Capuro. <laughs> And facing you tonight is the captain of the left team, someone who our right-wing viewers have already named hashtag Ginger Winger. It's Diane Spencer. <laughs> and her teammate is someone who was raised as a Buddhist and still believes that all life is suffering. Then again, he does have five children. It's Josh Howie. So here at the Ministry of Offence, we ask our teams to tell us which minister they would like to be. So, Diane, I'm going to start with your team. What are you the minister of? Well, I am the shadow minister of Angela Rayner's stunt doubles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you see, it's quite difficult uh, for Angela Rayner to distract the entire government, so uh, we formed a union and we're all taking it in turns. <laughs> and Josh, what are you the minister of? Uh, I'm the minister of panel shows. <laughs> and I've been sent to check this one out. <laughs> and, uh, well, we got a woman, so tick. Uh, <laughs> we got a, hom a homosexual, tick. Uh, <laughs> We got a Jew, big tick. Uh, we got someone from the colonies. Uh, we colonies, you. Yeah, whatever. And we obviously have a white cis male, so we may continue. 
<laughs> and over to you, Leo. Uh, which minister are you going to be? Uh, this week I'm going to be the Minister of Liberal Tears. So it's been a fantastic week for anybody who, who likes using liberal tears as lubrication because Elon Musk bought Twitter. I don't know if you heard about this. And uh, this has been the liberals are up, up in arms. They're, uh, they're saying he's a Nazi because he's standing up for free speech, which was, of course, one of the core tenets of Hitler's Nazi party. <laughs> and Scott? Oh, I'm the minister of overpopulation because I hate children. <laughs> Uh, now that's the introductions out of the way, I think it's high time we got this show on the road. Yes, our first round is clickbait, where we give each of our guests a news story and task them to come up with a headline. In true tabloid style, these headlines need to be funny, punny, or downright sensational. Basically anything that's going to draw you in as clickbait. OK, let's start with the left this week. Diane, I'm coming to you with this first story. A man who was searched by customs officers at an Indian airport turned out to have two pounds of pure gold hidden up his rectum. Officers had noticed the passenger acting suspiciously and then carried out a cavity search that revealed seven 790 grams of gold valued at around £43,000. According to airport officials, that contraband was extracted and seized. Wow. What can you do with that? Piles of gold? Oh. <laughs> um, or maybe it was some kind of like, like maybe it was an ill thought out wedding proposal. <laughs> like he was going to go home and kind of say to his, like his girlfriend, oh, come on, we've always wanted to try it. Rummage around. And then, <laughs> and then she goes, oh, there's gold. And he goes, I know, will you? And she's like, ah. Um, Let me wash my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Custom officer's golden handshake. <laughs> or something like that. That's nice. <laughs> Um, but it definitely looked, the way that he was standing there, he was really clinching tightly. It's, see, I think this could be a new sort of strongman event. Uh, they have to sort of put it all up the bum and then walk 10 metres. The man with the golden bum. Oh. <laughs> Any more? Yeah. Man proves you can polish a turd. <laughs> Uh, let's throw it over to the other team. Well, looking at that uh, scan, that x-ray, I mean, the reason he was in so much pain is because he seems to have shoved it into his rectum and up into his heart. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's gone a bit too hard with the shoving there. Yeah, I yeah. think it would have been okay if he'd just left it, you know, in, in the bum area. Yeah, yeah, Stop yeah. when you get your elbow in is always yeah, a good yeah. advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my rule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any more headlines? I, don't, I haven't got a headline, but I do think that that could be, like, that's where they found the Nazi gold. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then they returned it. It's like, you know what, you can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he's a victim of bullion. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the next one then, over to the blue team, and here's Leo's story. A Florida bride and her wedding caterer have been charged with allegedly lacing guest food with cannabis. Police were called after the reception of about 50 people went off the rails once the dinner was served. Investigators said the food, including lasagna, was tested and found to contain marijuana. What can you do with that? It's, uh, it's a nice day for a whitey wedding. <laughs> I'm not being racial, by the way. The whitey in Scotland is when you have too much weed or too much buckfast or too much buckfast and weed and tamazepam and heroin and mm. you go very pale and you vomit, like the people at this uh, wedding did. Mm. So you're not being racist now? I'm not being racist <laughs> at this particular point. Um, that's coming up later. Um, well, the, the bride, bride could have said, I've weed in the cake. And then, <laughs> and then Amber Heard pops up and says, that's nothing, I did a big poo in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from uh, this team? The guests said that they felt paranoid, um, sick and unsteady. And I thought, that's every wedding I've been to. <laughs> How could you tell you had weed in the cake? I'd call it, what a spliffing wedding. <laughs> Very good. Do you take this bride to be your lawfully weeded wife? <laughs> oh, we joint you in holy matrimony. <laughs> 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 
OK, let's head back to the left. Josh, here's your story. A stuffed reindeer has been revealed to be a drug mule. An LAPD investigation is underway over the stuffed animal found to be hiding three bags of white powdery substance resembling cocaine in its belly. The donation centre worker said the plush deer was dropped off with a variety of weird items. I was like, this person must have been rich or famous or whatever, said that great speaker. Um, so what can you do with that? Well, I mean, at least now we know how far the Christmas could afford all of those Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking something along those lines, maybe uh, Pablo Rudolph. Uh, <laughs> something like that. Dance of Prancer, uh, yeah, Pablo, Pablo and El Chapo. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> exactly. Half of them got their heads chopped off. Um, Rudolph, um, the red-nosed cokehead. Uh, for those people who are drug addicts, it's going to be a white Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Diana? That's a sweet joke about drugs. <laughs> it's a very sweet joke. Um, who's a snorty boy? <laughs> I like the idea that it is Santa actually, because it would make sense if Santa was a drug dealer because he flies over multiple zones, he never goes through customs, <laughs> he lives surrounded by snow. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a bit too fat. He is too fat to, <laughs> to have a cocaine <laughs> habit, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we are really showing we know too much. Yes, so yeah. we're giving ourselves away there. Those of the team, any ideas? Scott, you must know about drugs. I do, yeah. I, no, uh, <laughs> that doesn't look like a reindeer to me. Because, you know, when I was younger, we used to uh, raise baby deer. Um, yeah, because in California, hunters tend to shoot the parents. And so the deers are left abandoned. And so I bottle fed and, and wiped their bums and stuff. And they don't look, that looks like a, a hybrid. You reckon that? Runs on half electricity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't. I, I think we've been duped. I think that's a. I think that's a pony. I think that's, <laughs> that's a pony. Or a hairy child with horns. <laughs> and they've they've packed some coke inside of him. It's but strange. Now that you've said about baby deer, are you suggesting that Bambi's mum was gunned down because of county lines drug battles? It was, a drug, it, was a, it was a gang battle. Wow. And, and she sacrificed her only child. Right, yeah, yeah. America is such a hard place. Well, oh, it's we tough running the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're coked out of our minds. We've got to stay up all night. Someone's got to deal with the Russians. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. And finally, let's see what Scott does with this story. The most violent and dangerous of Britain's criminals are being allowed to keep birds in their cells, it's been revealed. Inmates in Category A jails, prisons for the likes of murderers, rapists, terrorists and those criminals who pose a grave threat to society if they escape, can keep pet budgies, small parrots and even chickens as a reward for good behaviour. What can you do with that? I, I think it's kind of sweet. It's a sweet story like that, like that Birdman of Alcatraz movie, right, with Burt mm -hmm. Lancaster. It's nice to have a little companionship. It, it raises expectations. Oh. <laughs> Leo? Yeah, I think uh, you could say if you go to prison in Britain, uh, you'll be expected to stroke a cockatoo. <laughs> <laughs> it could be another example, if this was in the Daily Mail, it would be another example of the soft touch pr prison system we've got, because uh, British prisoners get to play with tits. <laughs> <laughs> And on to this team, any ideas? I just think that they should not give them such a pleasant bird. Why not give them an horrible bird like a seagull? Like something that's going to nick their food. <laughs> and what I think is a bit weird is that a criminal wants a bird that can repeat information it's heard. Like a parrot, like something going, Rrr, he's under the patio. Rrr. <laughs> Not two. <laughs> um, I'd go for jailbirds for jailbirds. Yeah. Polly wants a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> well done. All of those were great, but there can only be one winner, and the winner for that round is the red team. Yay! Now it's time for a break. We'll be right back after this. My name is Andrew Doyle. 
Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics <laughs> because I want to give it a lighter edge, and also they work for less. See you there. Welcome back to Ministry of Offence. We're still here with Leo Kirst, Scott Capuro, Diane Spencer and Josh Howey. And it's time for our next round, Lie Detector. Our teams are shown some newspaper stories from this week and they must decide which parts of each story are true and which parts are false. This round is head to head, so it's fingers on buzzers. Can you spot the lie in this first story? A South African naval base has been occupied by a group of angry pacifists who are getting drunk on biodynamic wine and stealing vegan food from the Navy's kitchens. The audacious activists enjoy legal protection in South Africa, which means that the only weapons allowed to be used against them are paintball guns. It's the lie in there. I, th I think it's got to be the paintball guns because, like, they're vegans. So, what's the point of like they would be they'd be killed by paintball guns? Yeah. <laughs> I I think that it's the photo that's incorrect because vegans are too weak to stand. Yeah. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a suit like that in the hot South African sun, that's never going to happen. Yeah, never. No. The correct answer, uh, the real story, is that it was in fact a troop of baboons and not angry vegans. I'm not sure which is worse, although I know which one I'd rather follow into a toilet. <laughs> OK, everyone, fingers on buzzers. Here comes the next story. A bungling US spook left UK military secrets on a train after he forgot his briefcase on the 8.30 a.m. from Mildenhall. His lost dossier included details of the RAF's £125 million Thai food jets and revealed the names of US counter-terror staff based in Britain. Well, the lies there. There's no way it was a train, it was a replacement bus. <laughs> <laughs> Good suggestion. Any more? I think Josh is uh, almost there, but uh, due to budget cuts, uh, it wasn't a train, it was a mega bus. <laughs> but it was fine because it was a mega bus so nobody could read. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. I think Americans are not counter-terrorists, they're the terrorists. That's the part that's wrong there. The problem causer left the stuff on the train because he wanted to start another world war. That's where we make our money. This sounds like, <laughs> this sounds like you want to be in that team. Oh. <laughs> There's no such thing as a typhoon jet. That's just a very fast cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Typhoon jets do exist. Uh, you can see them because they rotate counterclockwise. <laughs> <laughs> Typhoon jet is actually my drag name. So... <laughs> <laughs> Which way do you spin? <laughs> Wherever the wind blows, man. <laughs> I can tell you, you are all wrong, I'm afraid. Mm. He actually uploaded them so that he could work from home. <laughs> OK, everyone, fingers on buzzers. Here comes our next lie-laden story. A pub landlord and his son have been summoned to court for alleged coronavirus rule breach during a game of darts. In June last year, environmental health officers spotted a man indulging in a celebratory hug after throwing 180. The pub owners could face a fine of £6,000. What are the lies? Um, I don't think they're being taken to court. I think they're running for government. <laughs> <laughs> this is Britain, so I think the man and his son uh, were unable to hug each other um, because they can't express emotions. <laughs> and they were arrested by the left-wing establishment for toxic masculinity. <laughs> I've actually watched a fair bit of darts and there's no way that you could actually get your arms around to hug them. <laughs> I think it was a handshake instead. Yeah. Or a kiss on the cheek. Yeah, I think, uh, like, Josh has got a point here. I think this is true because darts is the most COVID dangerous sport in the world. Mm -hmm. They're all clinically obese. They're all old, or look old anyway. Uh, they're all uh, uh, proper scum. So <laughs> it's all true. I think they found two packs of cocaine <laughs> in a deer's bum. And then uh, the environmental guy had a 
bar of gold fall out of his butt, and, <laughs> and they danced around singing, and that was the problem. Yeah. Do you understand the rules of this one? I don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm on antidepressants here, all just floating clouds going by. <laughs> the correct answer is that the man was reportedly seen throwing a ping pong ball into a cup of beer instead of sitting down to drink it. He remained standing. And I'm not a fan of these ping pong bars. I went to one in Bangkok and I won't go into details, but it was very tricky to get a rally going. <laughs> <laughs> so here's your last lie detector story to get. Fingers on buzzers for this one. Toy maker Lego has launched a build your own queen set in honor of the monarch's 96th birthday and platinum jubilee. Whilst most people were delighted at the prospect of a Lego queen, other people said she looked too boxy. <laughs> <laughs> Any lies in that? Is it? Um, it's actually a build your own Prince Andrew, so that so that kids can finally have a chance to play with him. <laughs> <laughs> I I I think it's all true, and I think there's a little corgi, and it does little poos, uh, little those little brown things, and then but and I think there's a whole range that they're going to bring out as well. Like we said, we've got Andrew. Uh, we could probably have Prince Harry, but it'll be like one of those twisty faces. So it's like, when he's next to Meghan, he's just miserable, and then she goes away, and he's like, hey, he's happy. <laughs> I don't think it's Lego. I think it's Barbie. I think Barbie's brought out a queen Barbie, and she's smaller than normal Barbie because she's a little bit short, and she comes with her own light little coat and her hats and her little brooches, and she comes with a little Bognorigious beach house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, uh, Dan, you got it absolutely right. Oh. The real story is that toy maker Mattel has launched a Barbie doll of the Queen. Oh. Wow. Uh, Mattel have opted not to send the royal household any Barbies, not least because they're worried that Prince Andrew might try and use one as bait. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the wrong Queen, isn't it? They've done the Helen Mirren one. They have, yeah. Yeah, that's not the Queen. No, I mean, I just look at a stamp, for goodness sake. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so off. Well done at the end of that round. It's a draw. Both teams get a point. Yeah! 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 Like that? Yeah! Yeah! Now it's time for our next game, Spin Doctors. In this round, one member from each team will take on the persona of a public relations specialist as they defend a public figure for something they've done this week that was erroneous, fallacious, or just plain moronic. The right, you're up first. Who will you be spinning this week? It's Jacob Brees Mogg. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a little uh, reminder of this story. There's certainly a place for working from home. It works in some instances. But I know that people are having difficulties getting government services, that getting driving licenses from DVLA, there's a delay with some passports. We need people whose jobs are dependent on being in the office back in the office. That the rest of the country is getting back to normal, and I'm encouraging the civil service to do the same. All right, spin away. Yes, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg is encouraging people back to work, uh, which, I mean, he manages to get into work, even though he's, he's actually a, a ghost of a Victorian man who appears in a dream at Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually totally agree with him, um, you know, and, and this is going against his best interest because he likes to, to stretch out and cover many seats at work. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, civil servants, uh, he's saying that they should lose their London waiting. They get extra money because they live in London and or work in London, so they've got to come in, they've got to pay for the rail fares, but they're not, they're staying in their nice farmhouses out in Oxfordshire. And uh, Nadine Dorries has, uh, has criticised this as Dickensian, the concept that people should actually have to come into their place of work and do some work. I mean, it's hardly, I don't, I don't remember reading a Dickensian tract where some poor put-upon worker uh, had to, had to minimise Facebook uh, when their boss came walking over. I mean, they've got a pretty cushy deal in the civil service. I think they should, they should come in and stay at work, camp there, like, like you're working in the Amazon with warehouse uh, and anybody who doesn't um, never mind firing them send them to fight in Ukraine uh, to defend Western liberal democracy let's see if that's convinced the left um, well I would say that they probably don't want to go to work because if you went to work and you knew Jacob Rees-Mogg was going to be there would you want to turn up to the office <laughs> forget wanting to work with him Could you imagine living with him he's leaving these passive-aggressive notes on that you know run out of milk like he's gonna type it up on his little commons paper and like <laughs> I think you might have noticed we were about to run out of milk or putting something on the dishwasher like they, they work better if you rinse first uh, I know, it's one thing I, one thing I don't like about him is all the kids oh 
He's got so Talk about me again. I know. Well, <laughs> what is his job? He's the minister for Brexit opportunities. Yeah. No wonder he's got a huge amount of time on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid arguing. We should acknowledge Rhys Mogg's intellect, though, because at some point in the 1860s, he invented a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the left, it's now your turn to defend. Who will you be spinning this week? We will be uh, defending the CEO of Disney. Mm. Uh, let's have a little reminder of this story. Protesters gathered outside Disney World in Florida, unhappy with Disney's opposition to the controversial so-called Don't Say Gay law. Disney's CEO has said he'll fight the bill, while Republican Governor Ron DeSantis has revoked Disney's special tax status and slammed Disney for being too woke. OK, off you go, Diane. Well, of course, Disney is going to stand up and defend gay education in schools because Disney is full of parades, <laughs> or as they will now be known, pride marches. <laughs> Disney has always been about celebrating different kinds of love. Even from the very beginning, you know, you have the very simple ones, you know, man loves woman in coma. <laughs> Woman loves beast. <laughs> Fish loves man. And now we've even moved on to snowball generating lesbian loves no one. <laughs> oh, but I like it on, on the picture they've uh, they've put pedo world on the, on the sign. That's that's a theme park. I'd like to I'd like to see opening. <laughs> one, go, go on the one to, one to take the kids to when they've been naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I think Disney is it's already too gay, for God's sake. <laughs> All the colors and the, the trans and dresses and the, the gays running around is giving candy to kids. And the scary, that, I don't even know what creature that is with that yellow tie on. This, I think it's going to be Mickey Mouse, but I think Mickey's had a facelift because, uh, <laughs> it, no, it's all too terrifying anyway. And I think t telling kids, you got to be gay to get in, that's going to be too much. Kids don't know where they want to be. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle because there's a TV show on called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all my friends were talking about it and stuff. It's, it's like being non-binary in 2022. And uh, I think there was some merit in me not being allowed to go through the necessary changes to become a turtle. <laughs> um, having a, a, a turtle shell irremovably grafted to my back and learning various uh, Chinese martial arts. Your head is too small for your body though, so there's that, you've got that. Yeah, and I can pull it inside. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, the don't say gay, gay bill gets a lot of stick, but all it is is they want to teach uh, five-year-olds, um, you know, all about trans and non-binary and gender queer stuff, and it's like it's just a bit young. Like wait till they're six. When they're six, <laughs> they can have all that stuff. Look, they're just trying to be inclusive. So when you go into the parks, it used to be that it'd be like, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And now it's uh, welcome dreamers of all ages. But now, actually, we've had some feedback. And supposedly, that's very uh, offensive to insomniacs. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I've got to say, as a gay man, uh, that I liked it better when it was illegal. All this, uh, all this support garbage takes away the free song, if you know what I mean. Uh, this, and this you've, you've made it into a musical now. It's no fun anymore. God. Well, both very well challenged. Uh, Governor DeSantis should remember all the jobs that Disneyland provides. I worked there myself for a summer, doing one of the hardest jobs, following Goofy around with a blue bag and a shovel. <laughs> but ultimately, it's up to me to decide who has the best spin, and I think the most compelling defense was the blue team. Yeah. 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 yeah! 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 So at the end of that round, the team in the lead are, well, it's anyone's guess to be honest. Now go and buy some stuff and we'll be back after this. <laughs> Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes, big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners a paper review show that won't send you to sleep like the others will. 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Join us. Welcome back to Ministry of Offence. We're still here with Leo Kerr, Scott Capuro, Diane Spencer and Josh Howey. And it's time for our next round, Anti-Social Media. 
Yes, this is anti-social media in which we look at online reactions to various world events and then ask our teams to guess who said what about whom. The teams will need to match each post to an event or a celebrity who said it. Think of it as social media snap. OK, Diane and Josh, over to you. Yours are all written about someone. Here are your tweets. Can you guess who sparked this backlash? I'm just checking you're the same blank who once told a disabled person if they were fit to tweet, they were fit to work, who proudly used the term window lickers and voted for ESA cuts. Oh my Who's word. That? Whoever the blank is, they're clearly of an older generation if they use an offensive term like window lickers. But if you're fit to tweet, you're fit to work. Like... That is a tweet. That doesn't necessarily mean you're fit to work. Get and if you read in... Twitter, it's full of rubbish. I don't know. It's got to be a politician, obviously. There's voting involved. OK. I'm assuming they're a British politician because of window lickers. Oh, yeah, They yeah, not have yeah. windows okay. in other countries. Mm. <laughs> no, but it's only in the UK that we lick them mm. uh, no. for warmth now. Oh. As, uh, <laughs> I can give you your next one. If you really think anyone is mocking you because of blank, I'd suggest having a serious reality uh, check. OK, now it's coming together. Yeah. There's not a blank. It says dyslexia. Yeah. Oh, oh so oddly <laughs> enough, our proofreader missed that. What are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> so somebody's being um, mocked because of their dyslexia. Have you got yeah. any more? So and, uh, well, I, yeah. All right, the next one. Blank effing up daily is par for the pitch. So someone dyslexia, they uh, vote politician. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. She has been making a lot of mistakes, and she's blamed her dyslexia for them. Have you got any more tweets? And finally, blank watching Wimbledon. Offside oh. ref. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got this wrong. Uh, <laughs> Have you? Yeah, offside ref. That's obviously like a Glaswegian Andy Murray fan. How do you speak? I may, I may know the spokesman for. <laughs> yes, but do it like, you know, how you guys. Do I've it. Well, I've never, I don't know how to. I've never seen Outs a game of tennis in my life. I'm just saying, when you call people out for a fight. Yeah. Out, so say that. Would you like to have a fight, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's Nadine Dorries, the mad digital culture sports secretary who doesn't know that tennis does not involve pitches. <laughs> well, I can give you multiple choice just in case you want to see uh, if this helps you narrow it down. Rishi Sunak, <laughs> Katie Price, Nadine Dorries and Judy Murray. Do you want to change your mind on your final answer? No, it's no deal. No. You are absolutely right. Correct. It is Nadine Dorries. It's in response to this tweet where Nadine said, I have dyslexia, which means when I speak, I often run my words together and say things that sound like the words I'm trying to say. Dyslexia affects people differently. And it's true. Other common side effects of dyslexia include blurred vision, insomnia, headaches, and not realising a national institution is actually funded through advertising <laughs> revenue and not by public funding. <laughs> <laughs> Leo and Scott, here are your posts, which are all about someone or something being discussed on social media. Here are your tweets. Take a look at these. Arrest the courtroom artist. Blank, blank, and blank are victims here. You saw a lot of blanks there. I just yeah, saw I saw, yeah, me too. I thought it was going to be Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. <laughs> oh. Because they're they've got a court case going on. Right, right, right. It's the most amazing court case I've I've seen since Michael Jackson went to court. Yeah. It's uh, Amber Heard did a poo in his bed. There's other stuff. I mean, <laughs> doing a poo in someone's bed is big enough. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what else you got? I can give you this one. Is Quentin Blake the courtroom sketch artist for the blank trial? Oh, so it's just one blank now. That's yeah. Just one blank. Yeah. What? It's one blank. Of Quentin Blake. Didn't he do the twits? Yeah, he did roll like doll. Yeah. He did all the roll doll. Oh, work. right, right. Here's the next one. Imagine going to court and the sketch artist purposely draws you from like three faces ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be about a movie star because we all know what they look like three faces ago. Yeah. So, what? and I have seen Johnny Depp in court and he, I mean, he has a reputation for not bathing. I think we all know that. I can't think of any other high profile celebrity court cases that are currently going on though. Mm. Can you think of any others? It's one of the 17,000 Kardashians <laughs> is, being, <laughs> is being sued by um, Black China. Sorry, what, who is Black China? Black okay. China isn't, uh, it's, not, it's not a new um, a new motion by the Chinese Communist Party to bring <laughs> okay. diversity to yeah. Guangzhou. <laughs> Black China is a, I guess you'd call her a reality TV star. It's also my drag name. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> your final one. The courtroom sketch artist is clearly not a blank fan. These ugly depictions of blank, blank and blank are hysterical and speak to how they have deformed themselves in a very unattractive way. Good on blank, though. She looks good. Too many people for uh, what you said, the Kardashian. Amber Hart, so yeah, the, it sounds well. like it's the... And, and they are people who are in the press and the media all the time. We know what they look like and we have for a long time, so yeah. maybe it is... And they, they have a lot of plastic surgeries. They're always, yeah, yeah. you know, changing their, their appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Johnny Depp just seems to sort of grow into his uh, tramp-like, um, you know, visage. I'm yeah, expecting yeah. him to join the Labour Party any moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can give you some multiple choices, which probably won't help you at all. Your multiple options are... Britney Spears, oh. the Kardashians, Amber Heard, Colleen Rooney. Mm. Uh, it's the Kardashians, I think it yeah. is, because you say you kept saying them, them, and them, or it, there's it loads they, of them. Or, yeah, there's blank, so many. Blank. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It is about the Kardashians versus Black China trial. Although they're being sued for $100 million, they seem to be more upset about how they were depicted in the court drawings. And here they are. Kris Jenner, Kylie Jenner and Khloe Kardashian have responded to their unflattering court sketches by drawing up an alternative. <laughs> Things are a bit easier for the courtroom artist over at the Depp Heard trial. They're doing the whole thing using emojis. They only need three, the pirate, the finger, and the poo emoji. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, it's a draw. <laughs> and time now for our next round, Lost in Translation. Now, in this round, we give each team a video and they have to tell us what on earth is going on. So, Leo and Scott, what's happening here? Есть на земле большая страна, прекрасна отчизна и духом сильно богатство природы, широкий край Россия. Славься, родная моя, героев память храни на век, священные земли, победный май Россия. This is the start to the best porno I've ever seen. <laughs> I think that was uh, the, the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is all the lockdown nurses. You know, when they're on TikTok doing their, their yeah, dances. Yeah. They've got some budget behind <laughs> them do, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tories are pumping far too much money into public services, yeah. and now they can they can scale up their video production. <laughs> Those, the, the video production, you, the quality of it. I haven't seen video production that quality since ISIS. <laughs> it didn't sound like they were singing English. Do we play it backwards or by I think, No, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's it, it's it's Russian, and I'm pretty sure uh, that they are using that Z uh, symbol about the war in the Ukraine. No, it's uh, the 2012 Olympics. This is what Danny Boyle really wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I think is it the Cheeky Girls new music video? <laughs> uh, is it the Russian sort of version instead of Springtime for Hitler? <laughs> it's uh, in Germany. It's springtime for Putin in Moscow. I think it's it's clearly a propaganda video uh, made. No, Russians just speak the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see Shakespeare's sister is still getting gigs. <laughs> um, I'm guessing that Pussy Riot weren't available. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I this can could be how they were sort of pay working off their sentence. <laughs> that could be Pussy Riot. We'll let you out of jail if you'll do this propaganda it's video. Scary video. <laughs> Pussy Riot is my drag name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can reveal that it is in fact a propaganda video made by fake pro-Russian nurses from the Luhansk People's Republic. Uh, those nurses remind me of Florence Nightingale, not because of the Crimean War, but because she was also a hot piece of ass. <laughs> okay, moving on to Diane and Josh's video. You can work out what's going on here. Uh, what? Don't be mad, but it's small. It's small. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I don't know if I can go there. I consider this a spot of worship. Maybe small, but it's brought the driest places to life. <laughs> Maybe this is paradise. Oh. Any ideas yeah, what's going well, on there? I know exactly what this is because I was actually up for this advert. <laughs> I think it might be the video that they show kids at Disneyland to make them gay. <laughs> because they'll say, look. Look, you, you talk first, <laughs> and with the gays, they just dive right in. No, I'm thinking you're all totally getting the wrong end of the stick. Uh, he's trying to convince her to go on holiday to Dumfries. <laughs> which is small, but it is nice. It, it rains a lot, like, uh, like he, you know, so it makes uh, dry places wet. 
All right, let's take a look, and to me, it's pretty clear what's going on. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, what? You've all got filthy, filthy minds. It was, of course, Israel. Israel's a lot like my penis in that I've ruined many dinner parties by bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Leo and Scott, let's take a look at your next video. Consomme, consomme. So what's going on there? <laughs> it, it to I don't know. It totally freaks me out. I, I, I pity. I pity that girl. I think it, it ha must have something to do with a child's imagination. Well, obviously she's been rejected because she's bad at sport. I guess, right? Well, she's female. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it seems to be a man dressed as a dog yeah. uh, hanging around with children. Is, it, is this something to do with Disneyland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Disneyland Japan opened, and yeah. this is how they're, they're doing it. Uh, you are wrong, uh, because I know what it is. It's for a dishwasher. <laughs> because Japanese people are totally mental. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> Told you, dishwasher. <laughs> uh, the video is, in fact, a Japanese crisp advert. Clearly, those crisps come in salt and vinegar, prawn cocktail, and LSD. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to Dan and Josh's next one. Uh, can you work out what's going on here? <laughs> You know, it could yeah. be an Old Spice ad. Uh. <laughs> oh, it could be the N North Korean way of doing, like, zero emissions policy. It, it, it does look beautiful, but all that's got to be CGI, right? It's all got to be CGI, don't you think? They don't have horses. No, they don't have them. Uh, they've eaten. They've eaten, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the people, are, if I was a Korean watching this, I'd be like, what are they feeding them? They're feeding the horses better than, than me. Don't and, play with your food. Yeah, you can see a woman crying because she's just heard that Elon Musk has bought Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, it's, I think it's a dating video. He's made this dating video. He's still single, so he's put, put it up on uh, Plenty of Fish or whatever they have in North Korea. Yeah. Pinned, it, pinned it to the, the the board in Aldi. Horses. That's, yeah. that's probably yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I can tell you you're all wrong. I can reveal that the video is in fact about hardship. No animals were harmed during the making of that film, apart from the horse who had to carry around that fat git. <laughs> <laughs> and after that round, there are no points for either team. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, we did really good. <laughs> and just like that, it's time for our final round, the quickfire Q&A. In our final round, I'll be asking rapid-fire questions based on all the news this week. Our teams will have to buzz in to be the fastest to answer to gain the points. And play along at home if you fancy. There's still a few more hours to wait until the next Wordle's published, so you might as well do something. Question 1. Ukrainians have named a road after which English politician? <laughs> Boris Johnson. Johnson Road. Flipping is Boris Johnson. Oh. Um, an advert on YouTube has claimed you can cure STIs by rubbing what on your genitals? A hedgehog. Good. <laughs> Don't try it. Beetroot. Oh, so close, because it's vinegar. Ooh. Um, what claim has Donald Trump made about Prince Harry? <laughs> Trump is Prince Harry's dad. <laughs> God, Same hair so colour. Yeah. Prince Harry is whipped. Is that right? It's the correct answer. Whipped by oh. Megan. Actor Kerry Elwes has been airlifted to hospital after being bitten by what animal? Amber Heard. <laughs> <laughs> the answer on the card is rattlesnakes, and maybe you get a point. Amber Heard. <laughs> <laughs> a female horse food supplement has been banned in the UK. What is its name? Ketamine. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is slut mix. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> Which is also my drag name. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bought their last single. What terms have Google used to replace their gender-specific title landlord on its platforms? 
property owner. Yes, is the correct answer. Uh, Fascist property owner. <laughs> person with a cervixable property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How has a woman stopped her landlord from evicting her and her cat? Uh, she married a cat. She did marry a cat? What? what? She did. I mean, she didn't, did she? Because you can't marry a cat. I think she's in California. And I think in California, that's the least of their problems. So I think she... Uh... <laughs> Designers of a face mask for cows have been given an award by Prince Charles. But what does the mask do? It stop COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you think masks work. <laughs> <laughs> Only for cows, <laughs> not for sheeple. <laughs> it's not the right answer. It neutralizes methane in their burps. Who claimed to be one of the world's poorest monarchs this week? Is it the Queen after giving Prince Andrew 12 million pounds? <laughs> Is it the woman who was the head of Myanmar who they put in jail? Uh, no, not unless she goes by the name Spain's King Felipe the Sixth. All right. <laughs> just Is two Spain's King Felipe the Sixth. <laughs> the correct answer. Oh. <laughs> With just 2.6 million euros to his name. Oh. Oh. And oh. that's the end of that round. <laughs> And that means that, sadly, we have reached the end of the show. Congratulations to our winning team, The Right. Oh. Yay! Yeah! yeah. Your prize is Harry and Meghan's place on the balcony next to the Queen for the Jubilee. Oh. <laughs> and uh, to the losers, you won't be going away empty-handed. You'll both get to stand next to Prince Andrew. <laughs> Thanks to our team captains, Leo Kirst and Diane Spencer. <laughs> and to our guests this week, Scott Capuro and Josh Howey. I've been your host, Stephen Allen, and we'll be back same time next week. See you then. Woo!